Welcome back guys. Today's video is one I have been looking forward to doing for a long time. I love talking about things like this. Let's get started. So if you wanted a full frame camera, as of August 21, 2005, you could get one for the low, low price of about $8,000 plus a battery. Who knows? I don't know if it came with a battery or not. Maybe they said, screw you. If you can afford $8,000 for a camera body, you can afford 80 bucks for a few batteries. I don't know. But what happened on August 22nd of 2005 changed the photography world as we know it. That put out a camera, a true professional digital camera from Canon that was basically affordable. Now it wasn't free. It was still $32.99 plus tax which in today's money, I think it was like $5,400. So it wasn't free, but it was still less than the 8,000 plus tax for the, I believe it was the 1DX. I forget what the first one was called that Canon had that was full frame, but the one that was $8,000. Now you might think, wow, for that kind of money in 2005, I bet you got a lot of stuff. Well, you got 12.8 megapixels. You got nine point autofocus compared to the 6,072 that I have on my Canon R6. So you didn't get everything for $3,300 back then. But what it did was created a market. And the camera I'm talking about is the infamous Canon 5D. It was a, the first full frame camera that was made affordable. It's 12.8 megapixels, had nine point autofocus. So it wasn't, it wasn't full of stuff. And the video, well, that didn't exist yet. That didn't come along until later. So that was, this was, a photography camera only, but it is a beast of a camera and they work and they last. And even though this camera is almost 20 years old, I would still take it and shoot a wedding if I had to. I mean, I, it wouldn't be my first choice because it's so much easier to shoot with the Canon R6, different ones that have came along, but this would get the job done and they would like their pictures. It's a camera that you can depend on. I mean, it is just a fantastic camera. I believe the 20D was the crop version that was came out about the same time as the 5D. But the 5D allowed you to really up your game with the full frame. The ISO on it would only go to 1600, which compared to the 100,000 my R6 will do, and it'll upwards of 200,000 ISO. You don't want to go that high, but it's there. But 1600, I think you, I think you could up it as far as 3200, but you probably don't want to. Top it out at 1600, maybe try to top it out at eight, but it was still, versus what it was compared to back in 2005, which would be the Canon 20D, it was still leap years ahead of the crop sensor. Now the screen on the back, it, it obviously it doesn't flip out. It's 2.5 inches, so it's tiny. And one thing, the LCD resolution in this thing, 1600 versus 230,000 in my Canon R6. So again, the specs, it will not compete with today's cameras, but without this camera coming out when it did, things would be a lot different today. As far as speed goes, it's no speed demon either. For $3,300, you got a whopping three frames per second. So hold on, you don't wanna get too carried away. But you know, this was your basic camera. On top, you got your basic settings, you got program, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, bulb, no video anywhere, no flip out screen. But what it did do, if you were a photographer, is it really, really, produce some nice images, especially for 2005. After Canon put out the 5D and it was so successful, they, it then went on to lead to the 5D Mark II, the 5D Mark III, and then the last one that they put out was the 5D Mark IV before everything went to mirrorless. And that 5D Mark IV is a 30 megapixel camera. That is a beast of a camera. It is a fantastic camera. It'll do the job. If you have a 5D Mark IV and you're thinking about up into mirrorless, you could, but if you love your 5D Mark IV, I wouldn't change just to see what the new technology is like. I do myself, I like the new technology just because it's easier. When I started in 1983, it was all film. You had to put the film in the camera. There was obviously there was no screen on the back. There, you didn't see your pictures till you got the film process. I, it's come so far. I mean, starting back then doing everything manually, there was no aperture priority, no shutter priority, and then the Canon A1 or the AE1. You had a stick meter, I believe it was, on the inside, and you had to know what you were doing. You couldn't take a picture and look at it and make any adjustments. You had what you had, and you wouldn't know what you had for a week later or so, depending on how fast your lab turned things around. So with that said, you know, if you 
are happy with your 5D Mark IV and you've, you've got the menu memorized and you love everything about it, or the, even the 5D Mark III is still a fantastic camera, you know, you don't have to upgrade to the mirrorless just to see what it's like. Now, you can if you want to. Uh, some people love it. Most people do. But it's another learning curve that you're going to have to go through. With It just makes it so much easier. I mean, I went from in 83 from shooting Canon A1 and I upped it to the Canon A1. And then in like 1990, up to the Canon T90. I love that camera. It was so futuristic back when I got it. Um, I think it was around 1990. And then we switched to medium format, the Mia 645 for the major part of our weddings. We would use the Canons at the receptions. And then in 2002, we switched to digital. digital. I had told my wife, I said, I think we're going to need to switch from film to digital. I said, the market seems to be going that way. And she wasn't too thrilled about it. So she's a um, principal at a school. Well, she come home one day and I had stuff piled up to the ceiling. I had gone to our local photography store here in Atlanta called Showcase. It's not around anymore. I miss those days. I really enjoyed going to Showcase back then because they had everything. Some of you guys that are near Atlanta probably know about Showcase Photo. And I had a good friend that worked there. His name was Dan Glass, super sharp guy. I miss those days. But I went to Showcase and I bought everything I needed. I bought the, it was an Olympus. I don't remember the, the actual name, Olympus something. It was like five megapixels, I believe. The lens was built into it. I bought a die sub printer to go with it. It was just a total change. And I had a friend that was getting married. Actually, it was a sister of a friend. And I said, tell her I'll do a wedding, half price. But I'm tell her I'm going to use a new camera that I've never shot a wedding with. And I'm glad I did that because that Olympus camera, it for its time, it was good. But it really, really, really struggled with white dresses. It did not, it just could not capture, it would just blow out the whites and there was almost no way to recover them. But it got the job done. Finally, I switched to the Canon 30D and um, it really upped our game from that little Olympus camera that we had. Back to this camera, when, when we switched to digital, it changed everything. At first, I still shot the entire wedding ceremony before shots and the after shots, I still shot medium format. And then I would bring out the digital camera for the reception just because it had so many problems with the white dresses. It was okay for the reception, but for their main pictures, I wasn't comfortable yet using it at the majority of our weddings. But making that switch is something that I'm so glad that we did, even though there was a bit of struggles because it was early in the digital days was because most of the people that didn't make the switch from film to digital, they aren't shooting anymore. And, you know, I know film is making a little bit of a comeback now. You hear a lot of talk about film. And, and by the way, I, I used to, we used to own a one hour photo lab and we sold a roll of Fuji 24 exposure film for $3.99. It's like $20 a roll now. It's unbelievable. And that's just for the roll of film. Anyway, my mind is blown by what they charge for these prices of film. And I don't know what processing costs. I don't know if it's gone up the same increment as the film or the roll of film has, but that is just, boy, it would. It would take a lot to get me to pay $20 for one roll of Fuji film. But we made the change and we kept going. And I saw a lot of people that said that resisted the switch to digital and they went out of business. So as photographers, we have to be able to adjust. And Canon, when they put this full frame camera out in 2005, they made an adjustment and they changed the game of photography. They changed the whole world of photography. Without this camera, we would still be paying maybe $12,000 for a full frame camera. And they were the ones that had the built in battery grip, you know, the big bodies. But when Canon put this 5D out, it just changed everything. It, the change from film to digital was huge. And the change from the crop sensors to the affordable full frames was huge. And that's why I love this Canon 5D. I'm going to take it and play around with it and see what I can get. But, um, I got it from MPB and I'm about to send it back. But, um, and by the way, MPB is great. Anyway, this is a great camera. I'm going to play with it a little bit and, you know, reminisce about a little old days a little bit. I wouldn't say that switching from like a Canon 5D Mark IV to a Canon R5, I wouldn't say that's near as important as it was as when the, the change went from film to digital. I think that was a huge change because uh, you can still use a 5D Mark IV and get great shots at a wedding, no problem. But it does make it easier. Every advancement of camera, that's where I was going with this. I'm sorry, I get on these rabbit trails, but I started with our film cameras. It progressed, went to medium format, bigger format film, a little better pictures. And then the switch to digital. We got rid of film. We could see the picture on the back. 
And now they have it, you know, this camera has nine points of autofocus, like I said earlier. So you got to dial it around, find it and get it cropped in, adjust it how you want to shoot it. Where the digital, so I'm holding my R6, somebody walks in front of me, boom, jumps on their eye. It's ready to go. So the new cameras really now is just a matter of convenience. Some of these cameras that are made now make it so simple to shoot. It's just you guys that are learning have no excuse for not being really good in a couple of years because the equipment that you have and have access to now is so much more abundant than anything we had back in the 80s or the 90s or the beginning of 2000. So you need to appreciate that because that is a very cool luxury to have. I know you don't realize something's a luxury until you go without it, but having shot film from the 80s to now, it's a whole different world. It's so much easier to shoot nowadays, but there's still issues that pop up. You know, it's not always perfect. Um, every shoot, there's like a little glitch, like my Canon R6 occasionally will just stop catching the eye and I have to turn it off, turn it back on. So I got to dig into that, see if it's a menu setting or if I need to send it back to Canon, I'm not sure, but they make life so much simpler. But again, this Canon 5D August 22, 2005 changed the game. So there you go. I love the fact that I have been using Canon since 1983. And I think they are a fantastic camera company. I'm not sponsored by Canon. We're not an affiliate for Canon, but I've always used Canon. I do have some Lumix stuff I use for video that I am using a little bit for uh, receptions just because it's smaller and lighter and I'm older. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to tell you guys about the Canon 5D. I know some of you guys may never heard of it. It's about 20 years old. And um, I know a few guys that are learning photography that aren't even 20 years old yet. So you guys let me know what your opinion is of the Canon 5D. If you have one now, if you have any of the series, the 5D2, 3, or 4, let me know what you think about it. If you still use it full time or have you switched over to the mirrorless. But anyway, if we're helping you guys out, hit that subscribe button. Y'all have a good day.